right, so uh, next to kick off the second half of uh, track one, we have Manivanan Palanichami with us. He's the Vice President of Technology at BOFA, which is Bank of America. He has 19 years of experience in building large scale distributed systems and leading full stack engineering teams. He has previously worked with eBay, Oracle, and Wipro. He's also a certified Kubernetes application developer with a really loud round of applause. Can we have money on stage, please? Good afternoon. Um, I believe you all enjoyed your lunch. And I appreciate the willpower to come back to the session after the lunch because many don't. And I have attended events, and typically it's a pattern that people leave just after lunch. It's whatever is done for the day is just enough. So um, I also know that it's really hard to focus just right after the lunch. So I'll just try to you know keep you guys intrigued to this topic. And um, when I drafted, I kept this in mind. So this is technically very light, and I made sure that it is you know. Uh, filled with very le less technical jargons, just in case, right? Um, my name is Mani Vanan. I work as a vice president in technology for Bank of America in Singapore. And I lead a group of full stack engineers. So I, I, I'm, I come from tech background, so I understand stuff. And uh, today I'll be presenting my topic on generative AI, predicting the next wave of industrial innovation explosion. <coughs> so even if you're someone who is very new to generative AI, or you know you don't even know what it is do not worry you will still be able to get most of the concepts that we will discuss in this session and uh, um, i promise that you will benefit for the time spent in this session all right with that said so for the next 20 to 25 minutes i'll be walking you through all this first off we will take a look at where it all started and where we are now in the machine learning and AI journey. Then um, we will take a comprehensive look at the enormous amount of digital data the generative AI tools are capable of generating. Thirdly, we will take a sneak peek into the vast set of industries the generative AI can profoundly impact and the job roles it could transform in future. Then we will also talk about customizing generative AI tools for specific industrial functions, right? And not to miss out, um, we will also mention about the integrity and ethical standards and the security guard rights to be built for Gen AI tools when you are building one for yourself. Okay. Um, I, I believe most of you were present in the session where Ganesh spoke about the different the, the difference between machine learning, deep learning, Gen AI, so I don't have to repeat all of that. But anyway, I'll try my best to keep it simple. This is the lingering questions in everyone's mind, right? So how could generative AI distinguish itself from machine learning, right? Because machine learning evolved since long time, since 1950s, this terminology is present till date. And typically machine learning could solve basic problems like uh, regression or classification, et cetera. And you have deep learning with the neural network as underpinnings, which could solve more complex problems and can work on a stupendous co data corpus, right? And especially when JetGPT was launched, it broke the internet with the capabilities it brings to the world. Let me do a quick uh, recall on uh, what it was like to have a deep learning or neural network a decade ago. This video is still there on YouTube. You can go back and then check. Uh, the title could be How Google Works by Eric Smith. I don't know if any of you watched it. So 10 years ago, the deep learning and neural networks were still in play. Uh, in fact, Google has built its uh, brand new neural network by 2012, and they they wouldn't know what to do with that because uh, uh, the deep learning was still a concept at that time, right? Then what they did was they let the deep learning neural network to watch 11,000 hours of YouTube videos to see what it can learn, right? And Google thought they could announce something seminal in history if it could really discover something pretty useful, but all it discovered was just how to identify a cat with two eyes, four legs, and a tail. That's all it could do because 
you have two bigger problems in that time, right? You don't have data, and you don't have computing power. And people thought it's going to be another dud in the technology. Deep learning is going to be next, uh, you know, uh, another flop in the technology. But 10 years later, you have JAT-GPT, which almost blew everyone's mind with the kind of capabilities it brings. So uh, some of you would have already tried JAT-GPTs. If you haven't, I don't know why you haven't. Please go back and then try, because it's so good. So JAT-GPT has shown what it could do, right? So what has changed in the last 12 years? The data. The data that you could train were simply absent a decade ago. Now you have it fingertips. So this statistics is not verified, but from whatever I have learned or from whatever I have asked ChatGPT, this is the statistics I got, right? ChatGPT was trained over terabyte of data from digital textbooks, from Wikipedia, from websites, and from rest of the internet sources. And it, it was trained with almost 175 billions of parameters. Do you know how many human cells are there? It's a very vague question. Nobody would know. Roughly, there are 175 billions of human brain cells on an average. So imagine Jad GPT, they may not be you know, uh, trying to uh, compensate it for a human brain cell count, but uh, by a statistical number, Jad GPT's parameters are almost equivalent to human brain's number of cells. So you could imagine the amount of data corpus it was trained on. And now you have GPUs, very powerful GPUs, being produced. And the deep learning is taking advantage of the hardware to train further. And that's how you can churn out a product like ChatGPT in this setup, right? And that's how we step into an era of Gen AI. OK, now, so, so there, there are still evolving theories like what generative AI could produce. Uh, typically, the data is represented in four forms, if you ever think of, right? You have text, you have image, audio, and video. Rest of this data, speech, text, video, uh, a meeting organizer, or a PDF generator, or a PowerPoint presentation, if you, if you think of it, it's just nothing but it's a composite format of one or the other. If you combine text and image, you get presentation or PDF. And if you combine voice and video, you, you get a movie format, etc. So the basic four formats are very crucial. And as of today, most of the foundational machine learning models have already spent so much time in training themselves on those data, right? They are very capable. Now, what you see um, from generative AI tools offering is just mix of those. You have chatbots, you have video, you have content, you have presentation, productivity tools, etc. churning out mind-blowing categories of data. As you can see, um, these are the free useful AI tools. I just picked this picture from the internet. I just disclosed it. So you can go and try. These are the list of... Um, free offerings, and the kind of digital content that Gen UA tools can generate. Now, how many of you are here are programmers, including myself? I was a programmer, not anymore. You guys were, right? Um, 10 years ago, when my senior leaders were asking me to move out of uh, coding and get into management, I told them I wouldn't. I like to stay as a developer, because I thought that is the safest job ever in the world. You know that? Because machine can read, machines can write, but machine can never logically think. If they think, then we have altogether a different problem. But machines can never logically think. That was my, uh, I would say, like, that's the phenomenon I lived on for 10 years. But that's just now a, <laughs> you know what happened now. So now, machines started thinking logically. I mean, the right terminology is they were trained logically, sorry, they were trained to look at logical source code, and they're able to mimic it. And that is, again, the product of uh, Gen AI tool. Now, we have conducted an experiment. 
just a personal experiment so i can share we have called for the best coders and we have given them programs uh, sorry the logical problems and we have asked them to solve it some could some could not but tool like amazon code whisperer and chat gpt could solve the problems within seconds right then we asked chat gpt and code whisperer to rewrite the program using different constructs and logic it still did it then why would i need 10 developers to do the same job where it could do it right so this roles are going to be extinct for sure and that is when we came to a realization that the old job roles are no more going to be relevant and either people are forced to be reskilled or upskilled or they will be made extinct and <coughs> so with this kind of generative ai tools in play what it can do to the rest of the industry because when we talk about generative ai deep learning we all tie it to the it industry as if other rest of the industries are so safe but genuinely the gen ai is so disruptive that it could almost flip down <coughs> all the industries as you can see now when even if you google or do your own research there is vast number of categories that gen ai tools can transform all the industries but if you if i have to summarize and then break it down i think the four major areas will be number one being streamlining the data and access because when you work for a larger company the common problem you see is uh, you have data lying everywhere in form of pdf text files emails databases but you don't have a solid way to organize and access them and definitely ai is going to do that it's going to streamline the data and it's going to give you streamlined access and then automation this is a overused word automation is used everywhere so it's not just ai's problem that has been already there but the gen ai tools are going to still disrupt the automation especially when it comes to your sdlc software development or operational efficiency and then it is going to produce content that nobody has ever seen i'm not sure if you guys have seen um, six seven years ago there was a ai tool which could produce the human faces that nobody has ever seen and they have tried it so that was hard to believe but that is just the tip of the iceberg right then marketing and research and analysis data there are already many tools which is doing analysis but now the ai gen ai produce analysis and marketing tools are going to be way different than what human could do as it goes as i said people will be forced to either reskill or upskill or stay out of the job or be relevant right now if you see very common roles especially with related to it or other relevant industries let's just take a sneak peek on how it could transform from one to another in future software developer as i just gave an example where you don't need a developer anymore to write or build code so there is definitely no need for developer who can be a code monkey all the time right so we, we call somebody a code monkey because he can just churn out the code and can't think of anything else other than that so now the software developer role will be gone and all you will need is code assemblers who can assemble different pieces of code and then deploy for deployment also you have tools but at least you need someone to judge the ai generated code and then assemble it then the designer roles will be gone so you don't need someone to craft any design or draw any design or do any design but you will need supervisors who will have the subject matter knowledge, uh, expertise and they will just oversee the designs the tools are producing then the writer roles will be gone any form of writers will be gone and you will have just proofreaders who are already in sme and they just need to do proofreading to ensure that the writing practices are perfect and also it doesn't infringe any you know uh, copyright laws then customer service role will be totally gone it's already gone if you see many customer service um staffs are being replaced by chatbots uh, going forward this will be totally an extinct role and if somebody wants to still stay in the job and they will be the people who knows the things that chatbot cannot answer which is close to you know impossible all right then call center 
falls under stops and it's an extinct as you can see so these are just you know quick rules that you one can think of that you see uh, in day to day life everywhere but there are many other rules which will need a transformation or extinction then let's talk about the customization offerings for gen ai um six seven years ago when we were experimenting with basic machine learning all we have to do is we have to code everything manually right we have to develop the programs and we have to find the data and we have to train the model and we have to deploy it and still it will be a stupid program it won't produce anything useful but now you have gen ui which is already have blown past all this and then uh, they have spent empty number of hours in producing this contents now they are called foundation models you talk about image generation text generation video generation audio generation you name it you have a foundation model for all of that the major players are open ai and aws uh, provides access to tons of other foundational models you can take the models and then you can customize it to your own needs instead of building something from the ground right because building something from the ground will always not be productive and also it will not always prove you correct but when something is already built and be cert uh, certified and used by tons of other customers then you can simply rely on it right so fine tuning prompt engineering compliance and uh, ethics okay let, let me just touch upon few things we don't have a lot of time so fine tuning is the basic customization and let me talk about the prompt engineering how you can train a model by asking just questions just last week i took a picture of few cars in the car park it was a, it, it was quite evening time and it was a bit dark even i could not see what cars were standing there and i sent the picture to chat gpt i asked them to identify the car brand it said it could not identify because it's too dark then i asked can you try it could not then i again asked can you please try then it tried then it told it's a toyota it's actually a toyota car even my son wouldn't be listening to me if i asked him to try over and over again but the ai tools can do so even the prompt engineering is a skill right we think it's just you know a theory but it is not when you force the model to do something over and over again it could do it's like a magic i never thought it's going to work but something still works then <laughs> you have uh, yeah so when you when you are customizing a model of course you need to have your own corpus of data which is cleansed and ready for um, usage and which is of ip or copyrights free so when we talk about customization i just want to talk about two things which will be pretty useful because uh, when you read internet uh, i think uh, immediately everyone has adhd attraction this sorry attention distraction disease there, there is just too much information that you cannot consume you can try open ai's api open ai is number one player okay i without statistic i cannot say open ai one of the top player in the ai industry which released chat gpt and dali and other products they they have their chat gpt turbo apis um offering for a price of course many industries are assessing if they can leverage chat gpt turbo apis to produce something produce but let me give a brief example um these use cases are already published so i can talk about it it's not private um morgan stanley a finance institution has given a case study where it, they have tons and tons of documentation stored confidential documentation um or publicly accessible documentation etc and they trained chat gpt4 to read those documentation and answer queries those documentation and data are very crucial to the business and when they train chat gpt4 it could give answers to anybody e even the most knowledgeable person could not answer so i, I like what the cao has said this is this is exact wordings right the morgan stanley cao says after seeing the outcome of chat gpt4 sorry gpt4 training on their data he says this imagine everyone is having the knowledge of knowledge as much as the most knowledgeable person has in the company very very important statement because when you work in a company you know not everyone is well grounded some will have the solid knowledge and some will not 
simply have access to that knowledge, but when you train machines on the data, it, it can act as the most knowledgeable person, and everyone has access to it. And Stripe also has a success story with GPT-4 model. And of course, um, it's, it's available for corporate customers, but still there is a developer community which, experiment, uh, which experiments on GPT-4 Darbo APIs. Now I'm also doing my own experiments. You're happy to welcome, uh, catch me off if, you know, after the session. Then, quick one. So integrity and ethical guardrails. If, if you have seen in the last two years, at least a dozens of movies are representing AI as the main villain in their movies. If anybody has watched Mission Impossible 7, who is the villain? Entity. Nobody watched Mission Impossible? Okay, go watch it. So for the first 30 minutes, I could not get what's going in the movie, but okay, I, it's a spoiler, but still you can go and watch it. So it, it's, the, it's the AI mission. And after, after done watching the movie, right, I thought this is a, a, a total rubbish. This could never happen. But if you think logically, it could happen also. If you train an AI ethically wrong, because if, a, if ethically correct AI could do correct things, if a ethically a morally incorrect AI will do all the wrong things, that is also possible. And that is, that is why your integrity and ethical standards are very important. And especially when you work in a corporate setting, GCR, governance, compliance, and risk, you will often hear this term. So your trained EA should pass all these checklists. I'm not going to go through one by one, but it's just for your uh, knowledge. So your legal checks, your compliance checks, your data privacy checks, et cetera, and even the local mandates all should pass if you want to put a real EA into use. Otherwise, it will be your main villain, right? So I just wanted to keep it lighter and Behind the scenes, I am working on OpenAI's API to build custom GPT models. And I'll be around the corner. If you want to catch up, you can hit me up. And thank you. That's all I had for today. Thank you so much.